Oh, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. That dude right there. So today I'm bringing you yet another awfully sheathed Ontario. Uh, this is the Rat 3. Rat 3 from Ontario. Um, and like the rats, you know it's going to be a good knife. It should be a good knife. It better be a good knife. This is the Rat 3. I have high expectations for this knife. What I don't have high expectations is, uh, and is is this crappy sheath. All of their their wrap blades and and this style comes with this this god awful sheath. I just absolutely hate them. I don't like anything about it. I mean, I don't like the fact that it's a very rattly, um, a very rattly plastic liner. It's it's not fit to the blade. Um, I don't like the double straps, and I know that, um, oh, the double straps are so, you know, it's regulated for uh, for skydiving, for jumping, so you could jump with it. Oh, I mean, who cares? I can't stand these. I don't like the white stitching down the middle. I don't like anything about this sheath. Oh, but it's Molly capable. That's great. Um, there's lots of things you can get her Molly capable. I just don't like it. So... When I go ahead and I, whenever I buy a rat knife, I buy a better sheath. And um, so that's what I did. So now I went from something I would never carry to something I'm going to carry today. Um, this sheath right here I picked up on eBay. And uh, if you see one of these on eBay, you can't miss it. It's got that little lanyard with, I believe it's a skull on it. Um, if you see one of these on eBay, you will know that. It's a good fit. So I pulled up all the specs for this Rat 3. So let's let's take a look. All right. So we're looking at... Let's get off my beautiful sheet that doesn't rattle. Um, we are looking at an overall length of 7.625 inches. There's a lot of numbers in that one. Um, we have a blade length of 3.625 inches. Um, that's where all your extra numbers come from, because this is just four inches right here to here. Um, so your cutting edge is three inches. Um, that means your choil is, uh, 0.625 inches. <laughs> hey, good math. Um, your blade width is one, a uh, 0.25, one and a quarter inches, um, on your blade width. Um, blade thickness is a very thin and meager 0.13, but it's good steel, so the thickness shouldn't really interfere with the strength of the knife. Um, it is a drop point. It is 1095. Um, it is flat ground, and it is black finished. All right. And away we go. So so that's it for that. That's, that's the measurements. What do we have here? We've got some, the typical um, micarta scales, um, which even as they get wet, they they get even better. So um, the scales are great. Fit and finish, it's Ontario. You know what I mean? It's it's there. Fit and finish isn't superb, but um, it goes all the way to the edge. Can you f run your finger along there and feel little burrs on the, on the micarta where it all comes together? Yeah, you can feel it. Um, it's there. It's not like a, like an Essie where they do the liners and they finish it. And it's, it's the same looking blade, but it's just a little more refined. Um, but no, it doesn't need to be. Not really. Are you going to, are you going to not buy the knife because it's not as pretty in the, in the spaces? No, no, it's still good. You got your lanyard hole. You got your true full tank instruction. You've got your choil. You've got your little finger well. You've got jimping, um, You've got jimping at the beginning of the spine. You've got a really pretty knife. You know what I mean? That's what it is. And usually, and we're going to find out, I'm running out of hair on that arm. So we are going to, wait a second. Whoa, wait a second. Okay, yeah, maybe it's cutting some. I was like, what? It's not shave sharp. I was confused on that. But it's taken, it's, uh, uh. It's taken a few hairs off of there. Maybe more than I thought, but I guess, yeah. I mean, shave sharp, 
I'm not going to say it's shave sharp, but I will say it can cut the hair off an arm. Um, it's not going to baby smooth you um, out of the box. Who knows? Maybe it's just this one because my other rat, um, the, like the Rat 7 and what, that actually shaved pretty well. So maybe it's, I, I can say it's just this one. I have no idea. I have no idea. I can only tell you what I see, guys. And what I see is that it didn't do it. Well, let's see here. What is it? Sharp enough to just slice straight through the box and make a nice, pretty cut? Touchdown. Yeah, it's it's absolutely sharp enough for that. Um, so, all in all, we're looking at, you know, we're just looking at a rat. We're looking at a rat blade. Um, same as, you know, any other rat blade, just a different size because that's how they do it. Um, so am I expecting this to be a good knife? Bet your butt I'm expecting this to be a good knife. I haven't had a bad rat knife. Um, so let's get out there and let's use this thing. Come on. All right, we're going to start backwards today. We're actually coming out to the one inch forest and, uh, we are going to see how this little rat three will do. I'm gonna try holding one first because it's really hard to chop through a stick that you're just holding because it's gonna move in the hand. So when the blade hits it, you're not getting that solid base that it needs. It's really, because it's so small, it's really light. So it's not really made for this, but we're gonna see. Right there, right there. Look how even that is. It just caught on the skin in the end, right? So that's good. That's good. Let's see. Let's see if we can't get a little notch in here for you bushcrafters. You know how important a notch is. All right. That's great for tent spikes and and tie downs and things like that. So let's do a uh, a square notch. Everybody that's been with me knows I call. Uh oh, I call it the Lincoln log notch. And until I broke the stick, um, you can see that it was working very well. So let's let's do some let's do some skin in here at this this branch. So it's taking a lot more than I want when I do the um, cucumber cucumber salad test. It's just I want to cut off the bark, but leave there we go leave the green and not get down to the white. On a few of these I was going. And you really have to concentrate with this edge to make that happen because I did it at my normal speed and I was going too deep. So the edge profile is good enough to do it, but it's a little bit more tricky. You can see there's a lot of white coming through there. So the edge profile um, isn't, I mean, who knows? It could just be the stick. Maybe it's old um, and it's, it's causing that problem. So I don't know. I really don't want to blame it on the edge because... The edge seems to be really nice. It's really well done. It's just having a hard time with those, and especially on a flat grind, it's, it should have no problem, but it seems like it's just having a hard time. See right there, if I go really, really slow, you can see I'm picking up that green, um, picking up that green really, really, really thin. It's literally like paper, right? Less than paper. This is, this is even thinner than paper. It's weaker than paper. Look at this. Um, and if I go really, really slow and really soft, I'm able to do that, right? But some, with some knives, you can just whisk right through and you don't have to worry about going too deep. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, so you see that? Once I get it going, uh, that was a little deep. But you see how that works when I really want that fine stuff? If I wanted to, um, to do better feathers, like, um then i would so now it's gonna now i'm kicking it all off this is what happens when you don't ground uh ground your knife and give it a base i mean uh, your stick because i'll show you when you make your stick solid put it solid against something either going down or up then doing stuff like that you can actually just control it a little bit more here we go so now I can pick how deep I want my feathers, how, how thick I want them. Um, if I wanted to go 
long curls like that or short Nike symbols like that. Um, it's just in how you do it. But is this knife capable of all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's see here. Let's see here. Are we gonna be able to use it as that um, camp whittler? Are we gonna be able to get those tent spikes and pit spikes and spears and all that garbage? Abso-freaking-lutely. Um, it'll do all that. Oh, I wanna show you something. A lot of you guys are, uh, or not a lot of you guys, because so far this channel has really shown me some uh, <laughs> some impressive love for the guy. But there's a lot of a lot of Trump fans out there, and uh, I got this shirt right that was sent to me, and it has Trump on it. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And then people say, ah, oh, Trump's bad. Trump's caca. Well, he has a message for you. He's like, hey, <laughs> you like me now? I thought that was kind of funny. So. Let's uh, let's take this road show. Wrong, wrong, wrong. All right, what I want to do is I want to see if we can get a little chopping action with this little guy right here. We'll go on this nice piece right here. Even though it's small, oh, it's way too small for chopping. But, I mean, I'm making a little hole, but what I'm doing is I'm using... Uh-oh. Hey. Hey. You guys were supposed to stay with me. Um, so, anyways, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got to clean the camera. Woo! All right, so what happened was I'm not able to let the knife do any of the chopping. Um, I had to use all force from the arm, which obviously expends energy, which is obviously something you don't want to do when you are out in the wilderness is you know and you're in a survival situation you want to expend as little energy as possible that being said this in no way shape or form is a chopper is said to be a chopper is thought to be a chopper or is meant to be a chopper this is your bushcraft knife this is your small knife you can skin with it and you can get around your camp needs and you can cut your meat and you can process a deer and you can do all that stuff it's not made for chopping. Does that mean you might not be in a situation where this is what you have on you and you have to chop a little? Okay, that's fine. Um, just understand that if you're gonna chop with this, it's gonna take a whole lot of energy bah, 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 to get those chops done. Um, outside of that, it's really, really good. It's, it's, it's a good little knife so far. Um, it's doing all that. Let me let the dogs out here to play with us. We'll see if they're going to knock down the, the camera or just run wild. Run wild. Roscoe, you stay in the yard. We got to get used to that. Got to get used to that. All right, so uh, let's bring you down to the stump. Hold on. All right, so we're at the stump. We're at the stump. You guys know the stump. So uh, I don't want to pry too much with this because it has that skinny tip and it's a really thin blade. But if I had to pry a little just to open up some holes or dig out some some slugs or something that's in there, if I needed some bait for fishing and I really needed to pry, I can definitely do that. Um, I want to try. I'm going to go right-handed. I'm going to try and push cut some of this bark. And we'll see if we can open it up. Because you never know. Sometimes bark is an incredibly important part of your survival need and look at that look at that it spreads it right open um that's good because sometimes um bark can be used as so much it could be used to help fortify a, a shoe with a hole in it and you've been out in the wilderness and all of a sudden you're running around you don't need a stick going through your foot you can line your shoes with bark you can if you decided to drop an animal and you needed to make yourself some shoes if you're barefoot you can wrap some hide around the bark and then put it as an insole in your shoe so you can run around in, um, in homemade moccasins. And uh, people never think about that as bark as an insole, but it works. Um, so, so we have all that and oh yeah, and it's good for like shingles and things like that. Not shingles like old people get on their skin, but to make, you know, a roof. <laughs> All right, let's do some four foot drops. 
Ooh, <laughs> it bounced off and stuck in the ground. Let's see, it's so light. All right, here we go. There we go. I'm gonna do a couple hard downward throws and we'll see how these scales hang on. Oh man, that was solid and it had a lot of bite. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can get a log pickup. Heck yeah. All right, so that works. So now the reason I went backwards is because I wanted to test the edge. I knew we were gonna be doing some cutting of some nylon rope. So I figured let's work the edge just a little bit and then come back to it. And on a push cut, she still cuts. So when it, it bothered me that it wasn't shaving the way I expected it to. And then, you know, and then with the, the slice, it, so I was thinking, wait, is it the edge? Is there, that edge is fine, man. That is just fine, man. All right, so let's see. Let's see, wood processing for kindling, not for, this isn't gonna be your, your knife ax, right? But just for kindling, we wanna make sure that it can chop through. I'm going through knots here too. I'll even show you. You can see those knots all right there. It's actually all knots at the top. You can even see it from the other side. So it seems to be having no problem biting through that. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's good, right? It's good. It's a small bring along blade. It's not going to be your number one blade. However, I would also say that it is going to be a very capable, very capable everyday carry. If you prefer a, uh, a belt knife, over and this is what I'm carrying today my little uh, M16 by CRKT this is what's in my pocket today um, if you prefer a belt knife over a pocket knife a folding knife um, this is a very very comparable um, selection here this right here um, is small enough and it's Especially if you get the right sheath for it because the sheath that comes with is not a great everyday carry knife. It's just too big um, but uh, This thing right here is gonna be really good for that. All right, so let's see I got both dogs. I got both dogs Let's see. So we know that it's not a chopper. We found that out, but we know it can slice uh, We know it can process we know it can feather we can it's gonna do all your whittling needs and things like that you know that you can baton um, for kindling we got all that we got we got all that we know what it does we know what it does but we don't know all it does because we haven't done all of it so I told you before that it's good you know for skinning right well I can't tell you and not show you so we're gonna come to the old soccer ball here and we're gonna see if we can't cut us a nice piece of pelt Oh man, that was easy. Look at that. Look at that. Just straight through. Easy money. If I have to take the pelt off a kill, um, this will have no problems. So it all leads up to one thing, right? One thing. We know that's the only thing so far that it really, really isn't good at or good for is going to be the chop test. Well, let's see how it throws. <laughs> well, let's see, let's see if I actually throw it right. <laughs> that hits so hard. Oh, I threw it short. You know, sometimes throwing a new knife can be a pain in the butt. Oh. My goodness, I gotta learn this thing. I gotta learn this thing. It's so small and so light. I, I, I have trouble with smaller knives. Ugh. So as you can see, I'm hitting it perfectly straight. The problem is I'm hitting it with the heel, which means I am way off. I am way off. There we go, that's better. So I had to, knowing that I was throwing it from the heel, I mean, heel deep, I had to change see that see that i know you guys are thinking i must have missed Woo! look at that 
So it's in there good too. So that's two in a row, obviously. We can just keep on going with that. Once I changed the grip, and what I did is I started throwing it with my finger here, and I was letting it go whoop that way. I was starting by throwing it here, and then I threw it here, and then I choked down and used my finger as my uh, as my point of turn to, to, to where I was pulling the axis around, and that worked out so much better. So, here we have it. Here we have it. We'll put it on the old on the old XJ. There it is. The Rat 3. Let me get my head shadow out of the way. The Rat 3 by Ontario OKC. It is a OK Doke little knife right there. So um is this something that you can belt and you can use for any day every day? type um projects absolutely is it a comfortable small blade absolutely um is it tough absolutely i just whack it sideways into that stump uh twice <laughs> which isn't good um and there's zero problems none no issues uh it's gonna get the job done my only my only criticism is gonna be in the sheath and you can get those anywhere i mean you can find those things all day long so once you do that, you have a complete little mini badass. So that's it. Speaking of little mini badasses, um, I'm gonna call it, man. I'm gonna call it the Rat Three. I'm Donnie B all day. Until next knife.